Welcome back in the nighttime, everybody. I'm your host, Patrick Previty. Joined alongside me, as usual, is Matthew Bracker. And also joining us is our producer, Justice Covert. We are virtual today because of the hurricane. So hopefully everybody is staying safe and staying dry. But we have a big weekend of college football to cover. So nighttime starts right now. Welcome back. Like I said, we have a huge weekend of college football to talk about today, and we can kind of just get into all of the biggest storylines. Alabama lost to Vandy. There was a ton of other upsets around college football. We don't get the college football segment where we get to talk about each and every one, but let's just talk about first kind of takeaways, biggest takeaways, I should say, Matthew, uh, from this past weekend of college football. Yeah, well, I mean, the upsets were insane. I think, like, this week was probably one of the biggest weeks for it so far this year. Obviously, like you said, with Alabama and Vanderbilt, what a game. You know, that was a game where Alabama, it just, I mean, I know the score was high. It was like 40 to 35, but it just felt like they couldn't get, like, anything going. Vanderbilt always had a response. I think they went up two scores early, I want to say. Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't know. Um, it was Yeah, just they, they very, were up early. Yeah. I was- it was, I think, 23-14 at half. I yeah. was waiting for Vanderbilt to come back. I was yeah. like, okay, well, it's going to happen. There's going to be a 28-point third quarter. Just kind of how you it mean was. You Alabama. Alabama. Oh, yeah, excuse me. I was yeah. doing that a lot this season. Huh? You've been doing that a lot this season. You said that was yeah. uh, Ole Miss and Tennessee last week. Yeah, I can't believe I keep mixing it up. Honestly, I, I think I'm just used to Vandy just like being down at some point. So yeah. that was why I immediately oh, switched it up. But I was waiting on Alabama to come back, waiting on them to drop 28 yeah. points at some point like they did against USF earlier in the year, well, but it just never came. I mean, of course you thought that. You know what they say. The Commodores are the doorstops of you know the SEC. Uh, so for them to come out and dominate Alabama, which I think like they haven't done since the 90s, is it was so – it was fun to watch. I really liked this game. Um, I was really shocked just after how Alabama handled Georgia. Um, but maybe it shouldn't have been because they they almost, you know, let that one drop in the second half. So I don't know what to think about Alabama anymore. Yeah, so this entire week was just like chaos week for college yeah. football. And you expect this every season. You know, the rankings are going to get mixed up and everything's going to fall apart for the AP Top 25. But I think that this happened a lot earlier than people expected, especially with, you know, Alabama doesn't lose to Vanderbilt ever. Mm. So that's a big surprise. Yeah. Vanderbilt doesn't beat top five teams this is the first time they've done it in program history. So, you know, it, it just mixed up a lot of things in the in the uh, in the league. And I'm excited to see what comes of this. Because this affects Georgia as much as it affects Alabama mm-hmm. in a sense, because Georgia now that they lost to Alabama, people are going to be looking at them who kind of almost lost in Kentucky. You know, they took care of Clemson. So their season now looks a little interesting going forward. Uh, meanwhile, Texas is sitting pretty in the top four. Yeah. Yeah, it affects a lot of different teams. Uh, we have the uh, AP poll scrolling down at the bottom. Yeah, we we kind of see a little bit of the shakeup. I got I see Penn State at four. That's almost like shocking. I'm kind of almost floored the fact that Penn State mm-hmm. is crawling all the way up to four, and we're going to have so many huge ranked matchups over the next handful of weeks. Uh, Could they end up getting AT number one? Tie? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 All the teams that are tied at 18 and then at uh, 11 11 as well. Like, it's just kind of shocking. Was there anything else that caught your guys' mind or caught your guys' eye? Because there was also Miami who escaped uh, defeat. Washington did end up beating Michigan. Missouri finally went down. Tennessee went down. There was a lot. Uh, I personally really enjoyed the downfall of missouri i've been waiting for it for a while i put a bet on them i put a bet on texas and winning outright i mean there wasn't any any doubt about that one in my mind we can start with you matthew yeah no i think that uh texas a&m is a i think they're a sneaky team i really do and missouri i thought that they were ranked super high this whole season for no real reason uh i i don't know for some reason i just didn't view them as too much of a threat um you know like you said the tennessee game that was a surprising game, uh, just the lack of offense from Tennessee. Uh, they couldn't get anything going in 
I mean, this year you look at like some of their scores they put up. Like, I think were they the team drop seventy? And I know they dropped sixty. Oh yeah, yeah. they dropped yeah. sixty, seventy. Yeah, they were down yeah. on the there for a little bit. So you know, it's really interesting to see like Arkansas come out and and you know play the game they did. Uh, I know it was I'm pretty sure it was a closer game. Uh, but yeah, that Texas A and M game was a blowout, which I didn't expect that. I expected it to be a little closer. But, you know, good for Texas A&M. And the Miami game, uh, I don't know what to think of Miami anymore because they're undefeated. But this, the last three, like, uh, games for them against Miami and, you know, Virginia Tech and, you know, Cal, obviously, they've been keeping it – well, not USF. Um, but it was close for a little bit in the first yeah. half. Um, so I don't really know. I mean, a win's a win, of course, but uh, it's something to think about. Um for sure. But Cam Ward's doing all he is, uh, all he can do. Uh, I I still really like Cam Ward as a quarterback, and I think he'll be a Heisman finalist. Yeah, it's interesting to see what's going to happen with Miami down the stretch because they are leading in total you know offensive yards in the mm-hmm. in the college football still with Cam Ward having an outstanding season, maybe yeah. a Heisman front runner. But what concerns the teams like Missouri the most, I think, is how badly they lost. Not that they lost in general. You yeah. see teams like Texas A&M, they lose one to Notre Dame. Uh, they they can bounce back in their season because it was such a close loss. Teams yeah. like LSU, you know, although they lose, they can still kind of bounce back because they didn't get completely decimated. I don't know where Missouri goes here now that you lose to a team by that much. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think – I mean, they don't go anywhere but to the bottom of the top 25. They're at 21 right now. I think Missouri is a team that, hey, they have one loss, so they're and they're in the SEC right now, so – they can crawl their way back up. They control their own destiny, as I would always think. But if you can't beat a team like Texas A&M, in my opinion, I know, Matthew, you think they're sneaky good. But if you can't beat them, I don't really think that you're going to be able to put together a resume that's going to be good enough for you to no, get to yeah. watch football playoff. And I, and I think we're all in agreement there. We've been waiting on the downfall of Missouri. So finally came. Uh, wanted to touch on Miami a little bit, too. I think, yeah, Cam Ward, he can only do so much, right? Mm-hmm. But – that's two weeks in a row now where it just feels like, man, they should have lost. We have late game yeah. stuff going on where they could easily be the team that uh, we are talking about right now along with Tennessee and Alabama as they're they falling down the rankings a little bit here and what are they going to do to bounce back? But they're not that team. They're undefeated right now, but the ACC looks like it's wide open mm-hmm. now. We can get into next week's games a little bit, but first wanted to play a one word game to describe some of these teams that are in the college football uh, playoff hunt. And I figured I'd start with Alabama. I have as their one word to describe them as asymmetrical. Joel Klatt said something I thought was really interesting. He described them as a 2018 big 12 team how they got all that offense and no defense. I thought that that was really apparent in the Vandy game Um, and even in parts of the Georgia game, especially after they weren't able to get the interceptions off of uh, Carson Beck. You know, after the first half, he only threw – I think he threw one, and that was the one at the very end of the game. Uh, They weren't really able to stop that Georgia offense after they were able to get things going. And in the Vanderbilt game, they came roaring back like later on in the second half and they weren't able to stop the Vandy offense from delivering what they needed to deliver for a win. And I thought that was really interesting. Something that we hadn't seen in the Saban era. Also just lack of discipline. I would say crash out King at the very end of the game. Uh, That maybe would have never happened under Nick Saban. And I think that they're looking asymmetrical right now. That crash out, oh, that was that was so fun to watch. It was. I'm sad we aren't doing a uh, fun moments around college football because there was there was a lot. This remember the uh, yeah, the South, the, the South Carolina player yeah. unloaded the <laughs> <laughs> awful. Don't see that in the NFL, but I agree there. Uh, you know, like I said earlier, I don't know what to think of Alabama anymore. So I think asymmetrical is a pretty good choice. Yeah, I agree too. I think the bore and the biggest thing with Saban has been always like. After the Georgia win, we were wondering how are they going to go from here? After winning by so much, how do you respond to winning as much as you respond to losing? And we see how it happens. They just drop the most points. I think Nick Saban only allowed like 15 points in his entire time at Alabama to mm-hmm. uh, to uh, Vanderbilt. And this time around, they already just allowed 40 in his first meeting against Vanderbilt. Yeah. So the, the biggest dichotomy between the two of DeBoer and Saban is going to be how they respond to either winning or losing regardless. For sure. 
for sure. But uh, I'll get into my team. Uh, I picked Miami. Uh, I know I talk about them a lot on the show. But my word for them is dubious. And I chose dubious because uh, I like saying it. Dubious. <laughs> but um, I picked it because, you know, I am hesitant, right? Like we said, the last couple weeks uh, were super – they've been super tight. And, um, you know – I I think that they are going to go undefeated this year. Well, I can't say that yet. I know they're on the bye week. They got Louisville next week. Um, I feel like however they play after that game, I will know for sure Like they're going to go undefeated in the regular season. But I've been saying it for a while. Um, I just – I don't know what to think anymore because, like, they started the season as a super dominant offense. And they still are putting up a bunch of points, don't get me wrong. But it's the defense that kind of concerns me with this team a little bit. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to say dubious. Right. I, I do think they're a very dubious team, but they have some concerns definitely down the stretch. Um, the team that I picked was Penn state and the mm-hmm. word I did was ameliorate, which is to improve something that's bad or not working. Now, a lot of people, myself included, are surprised that Penn state's at four. Now, I don't agree with that. I, I think you know if they play Georgia or Alabama right now, they would lose to both those teams straight up. But I do think that the new offense corner, Andy uh, Cottle Nicky Koto Nicky, has done a good job at Penn State, really uh, offering Drew Aller to become a better quarterback at the position, who wasn't even that bad last year necessarily. He led the uh, Big Ten in passing touchdowns with 25, I believe. But the biggest problem this year, though, has been slow starts. They uh, In the first quarter against uh, Illinois, they only had 10 plays at 28 yards and four minutes of the session time. And that was something that we saw in Illinois. They were tied at 7-7 seven and seven at the half. They had no score in the first against uh, UCLA. And they were up at 14-3 at half, though. Um, but actually, they were down 24-20 to Bowling Green at the half in week seven. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I think that he was able to offer Penn State a better – game that helps Drew Aller kind of get better as the game progresses in those uh, they've won every game they played against Drew Aller says he feels like he's the most uh, prepared quarterback in the country week in and week out he has improved his completion percentage by 20 points he has 1101 yards nine touchdowns only one interception on the season so I think Penn State moving forward if they can get that one against USC they're on the path to call the football playoff but not necessarily the fourth best team in the country That's pretty difficult to argue with. I got to be honest, because I am a bit of a Penn State hater. I kind of going to go the same route with my assessment of Ohio State. But I will say, I don't think that anybody is doubting the potential that Ohio State has. My word for Ohio State is undisturbed, like sleeping beauty in a sense Mm. when she's up in the tower, uh, Shrek or whoever has not come and saved her. Who does she, Shrek saves Fiona, but she's like Sleeping Beauty, right, in the tower? Or she's like trapped by the dragon? No, she's it's just more like she's a, just, Yeah, she's just chilling. More like a Rapunzel situation, I think. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, well, a Disney princess in, you know, undisturbed so far is Ohio State, in my opinion. They have not had a game closer than 28 points, and that was actually mm-hmm. last week against Iowa. They play Michigan State, Marshall, Western Michigan, and Akron. This week they play Oregon, but so far they have been undisturbed. Untested might also be a very accurate word to describe this team and Will Howard, but I think that they have a very high ceiling. So when you assess a team like Ohio State and Penn State, I think honestly a lot of people will give the nod to Ohio State, and I think it's right, but it is it does show a little bit of, uh, of bias, I think. Ohio State and Penn State play two weeks after this Saturday, and – who knows what that matchup could end up looking like if that is a one versus a two or a one versus a three. I don't know. I think Ohio state could end up jumping Texas if they beat Oregon next week. Yeah. Um, we'll see yeah. exactly what that uh, looks like, but they are undisturbed for me. I like undisturbed. Uh, I think next week is a giant test for them. Uh, but moving into my second team, FSU, uh, just uh. absolutely calamitous. Uh, you know, Awful season, doomsday. Uh, I don't know how that happened. I really don't. DJU, he might be out for the whole year now. Uh, I just don't see things getting better for him. Um, yeah, it's over. Ring the bell. That could be a good thing. That could be a good thing almost for them. Yeah. No, for sure. Yeah, I, I agree. You said your your word was doomsday? No, calamitous. Calamitous. It's like a calamity. It's mm. a calamity. 
It's a calamity. Uh, there's yeah. calamitous shit. No, wait, calamitous shit. It's shifts. not that. Well, it's I'm not what? that. Calamitous what? Calamitous shit. Well, it's like the T I O U S. Calamitous. Calamitous shit. That's not. Yeah, it. Florida State. Okay. I mean, I would also say Cancun. Cancun, uh, bound. So hyphenate mm. that maybe Cancun. as well. Okay. Would be another word I would describe Florida State as. Uh, wow. They're gone. They're done. This season's over. And if you ask any Seminole fan about the team, I think they'll just answer with 2023-24 season. That's yeah. what their response will be. Still kind of holding on to that a little bit. Norvell bought himself a year. Outside of that, we'll see yeah. exactly if he's going to be around any longer than next year if they suck again. Right. So moving on to another ACC team, we have Clemson, and I went with resurgence. Uh, Dabble Sweeney recently mm. just broke the record for most ACC wins by a head coach. Uh, it was originally held by Bobby Bound, who had like nearly 400 wins, but he only had 173 wins in the ACC. Uh, so Dabble Sweeney got his 174th against Florida State at Bobby Bound Field, 29 to 13. Clemson has missed out on the college football playoffs the last three seasons, and they're starting to look like they might make a return. And a lot of people gave Dabo Sweeney crap for not having any transfers uh, come onto the team, and that probably has stunted them a lot in the beginning. Uh, they lose to Georgia 3-34. to They only had 188 total yards of offense. But since that game, they have been cooking on offense. The very next week against App State, they put up 712 total yards and 66 points. Clemson, NC State, 523 yards, 59 points. Clemson, Stanford, 405, 40. Clemson, FSU, 500, and only 29 points. But they were averaging around 55 points a game after week one, which at the time, about last week, was the best in the nation. Mm -hmm. And it's really because of how well Clay, Kate Clubbanks has been playing. 1,219 yards, 14 touchdowns, two interceptions, led the ACC in attempts and completions last year. And... He only had 2,844 yards, 19 touchdowns, and nine interceptions. So he's way less interceptions this year. He's playing a lot more um, kind of responsible football for Clemson down the stretch so far. But, yeah, I think the fact that they're outscoring their opponents 209 to 41 in this four-game span says a lot about their team. And I think, you know, they're already leading the ACC with conference record at 3-0. Nobody has three ACC wins in uh, the conference yet. So I think – Slowly but surely, they're getting back to where they were before, and a lot of people are going to have to start respecting Clemson a lot more than they are now. Yeah, I I feel like I was I I know I talked a lot of trash about them like after you know the week one loss against Georgia, but uh, they've they surprised me so far this season. Yeah, I think I was on the Clemson like, hey, don't forget about them train for like a while now, mm -hmm. pretty much immediately after the Georgia game. Because I had like a lot of respect for that Georgia team, so I'm just tooting my own horn here. I'm saying like, look, man, I completely agree. They're come, they're coming. Honestly, I think we're we're gonna have a talk about not about whether they're gonna return to the college football playoff, but they're gonna get a bye because they're gonna win their conference. Oh yeah, for sure. I I, yeah. I think if I think they play Miami right, right now, right now oh, they yeah. would be Miami. Yeah, I don't. Now, they're, not, they're, not, they're not perfect. Not they're not perfect, man. They're resurgent. If they, if they play Miami at the end of this year, I'll take Clemson. I like I like Clemson here. Right. But the other sneaky team, in my opinion, is Oklahoma. And I have them as described as surreptitious. Yeah. To be a sneaky, sneakily. They're on their way. There's a lot of SEC teams in play right now for the college football playoff, and they seem to be beating up on each other. Now, Oklahoma does have that loss to Tennessee, and that really hurt them this mm -hmm. week with Tennessee's loss to Arkansas, but with Ole Miss having a loss now, with Missouri finally getting taken out of, like, the super high echelon rank, uh, part of the rankings, and with Texas A&M not really covering enough ground, in my opinion, uh, to really catch up to them just yet, I like uh, – well, they've uh, – excuse me, Texas A&M actually jumped them, I believe, but uh, I don't really think that they'll stay there for too long. I don't think that with their loss against Notre Dame, which is out of conference loss, but um, I think Oklahoma is in a pretty good spot right now. I think they could jump a team like LSU. I think that they could get respect uh, among the college football playoff community if they can beat some of those other teams that a lot of teams aren't expecting them to beat. So I think they're a very sneaky team. And now, as I realized that Texas A&M jumped up Oklahoma, I would like to say I don't like that uh, whatsoever in my own honest yeah, opinion. Okay. I don't think the Missouri win is very valuable whatsoever, but I think Texas A&M is a good team, though. But yeah, uh, for sure. 
better than uh, Oklahoma. Well, you stole my word for Kentucky. Sorry. I'm very upset about that. Mm-hmm. I might quit nighttime. We'll see what happens. <laughs> but so I had to change. My word isn't as fun now, but Kentucky is deceitful uh, because I think that, uh, you know, when you look at the SEC as a whole, Kentucky definitely was nowhere close to the upper echelon of, you know, the conference, but they kept it close with Georgia. And they beat Ole Miss, who was what, like number six when they played. Um, I'm not saying they're a perfect team. They're like three and two. I don't think they're going to the conference championship, but I think that they could still be a factor in the SEC. Yeah, I think there's a lot of teams on that bubble. You know, it does, it's mm-hmm. not a very top heavy conference by any means, like maybe some other ones. There's, there's definitely a lot of great teams like Kentucky and Texas AM and Oklahoma. Right. And now, kind of gets Missouri at the bottom of it that are pretty good at like getting to that upper spot but if you took you know kentucky well i know they they fit really well against Ole miss and uh and georgia so i can't even say if you took them and played against the top teams that they wouldn't be able to compete there's a lot of parity in the uh, sec we just saw that with vanderbilt and alabama so yeah i I think there's a lot of teams like that who at any given saturday could really uh, change the outcomes of things and that's why i'm excited about the oklahoma texas game you say Oklahoma has a chance to be very, um, what's the word, sneaky against uh, Texas this Saturday. Um, so, yeah, I th- I th- I'm really excited. If Vanderbilt can be, can put 40 points up on Alabama, I'm really interested to see what Oklahoma can do against the Texas team. Yeah, I'm very interested to see what they can do as well. I know we have a ton of game picks. You still got a team. You still got a word. Right. I got Texas A&M. Uh, the team that you said that shouldn't have been above Oklahoma. That's gonna switch. Yeah. I might almost, I might almost say like by the time the playoff committee makes like their first rankings, I think that there's a lot of switching that that is gonna happen in this rankings. We have three teams tied at 18. Yeah, and then yeah, I, I still don't even. And then that's on top of two teams tied at 11. Not a fan. Not a fan of those ties. But this is a very transitional top 25. I don't think they see this sticking around for much longer, especially since there's so much interplay at the top of the top 25. But my team is Texas A&M, and I picked reluctant because after dropping their season over the Notre Dame, uh, they are mm-hmm. reluctant to let that first loss kind of, you know, define them for the season moving yeah. forward, especially with Notre Dame losing to Northern Illinois. Um, they didn't really like, you know, how, how that kind of was shaping up for them to show who they are. They've won the last five games they've played. So the playoff hopes are kind of coming back. The Athletic, the New York Times sports affiliate, had them at 28% chance to make the college football playoffs last uh, in the beginning of the season. It dropped a 7% a couple of weeks ago, but now it's all the way back up to uh, 28%. Wow. So Notre Dame has bounced back uh, last three games. They had that uh, win against Louisville at 31-24, so that loss isn't looking that bad anymore. And A and M is just, you know, they just got the largest win ever against an AP top ten team with that 41-10 win against Missouri this last time around. So I think they're a team that's reluctant to kind of get, you know, brushed off into the corner. They won their last five. They still have one of the best home field advantages in the entire country. They don't have too much of a tough uh, schedule ahead of them. They're missing out on a lot of big SEC contests that a lot of other teams have to deal with. That's kind of a good thing because they might not lose, but it's kind of a bad thing because they can't build up their resume. But regardless, I don't think that first loss to Notre Dame is really going to corner them like people may have expected in the beginning of the season. Hmm. We'll have to just wait and see. I know we got a ton of crazy games. Now I could go run and get the chicken hat because I know we got all these game picks. I don't have the chicken hat right on me. Don't we all have a word for UCF? Oh, oh, we do yeah. all have a word for UCF. Yes. Okay. Are we going to count this down? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. We all have a word. Okay. So we all decided on a word for UCF, just as we decided for all of these other teams that we have mentioned, but we didn't want to give it away to each other. So we don't know each other's word and we're going to say it in about three seconds. I'm going to go three, two, one. Four Derailed. Okay. We can start can with derailed. The, okay. You can see the delay in the stream. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Uh, derailed, no. Um, after these last two losses, I don't really know where UCF goes from here. Uh, I, I know we we're kind of talking. I think there was a lot of optimism around the team, around the school. 
that was the kind of vibe, you know, being in the studio, like, you know, it, it was exciting, you know, RJ Harvey, you know, is he will be a day two pick in the NFL, um, right. you know, but now, you know, you drop to Florida and Pat, you said something the other week, like if they lose to Florida, like there's the people are calling for Billy Napier's head, you know, like we're kind of on their level now. I mean, I'm pretty, it's similar record. So I don't really know what, like where we go from here. I think our season might be completely derailed and we're getting into conference play and there's a lot of big 12 teams in this top 25. So I really don't know. Uh, we're kind of off the tracks. We are definitely not on the tracks. Yeah. That's, for, that's for sure. Justice, what was your word? What did you say? Suspicious. 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 Mm, sus. Okay. So why is UCF sus? Uh, they're a little sus because all the transfers. Xavier Townsend leaves after having his best mm-hmm. game of the season with UCF, and now you have the starting kicker who said he was injured before he, and he couldn't make the trip to UF for the UF game, and now he's redshirting and transferring after the end of the season. Gus Malzahn went to bat for him in the press conference saying that he was injured and um, you know said that he might make a return for the rest of the season, and now he's gone. So I think there's a lot of – and, of course, there's five other – I believe uh, transfers who are leaving. Yeah. So it's kind of Aaron just Russ. suspicious uh, part of the team, and, and not necessarily has anything to do with how they're playing. They're not playing well, but I just think off the field, inside the locker room, there are things going on. Like, why exactly is Xavier Townsend leaving? Why exactly mm-hmm. is Colton Boomer leaving? Is it all injury related? Is it opportunity related? Or is it something to do with kind of you know the chemistry in the locker room and the vibes of how Gus Malzahn is coaching the team? Yeah, I mean, uh, the the transfer portal stuff is really weird. Uh, I definitely think getting almost like quote unquote. I don't think Gus is embarrassed, but getting almost embarrassed by the kicker. Why? Why his transfer portal situation is at the forefront of the team. It's the kicker. Like it's a kicker who hit sixty percent of his field goals during his time here. I know Gus had to have been very frustrated with that. My word was foreshadowing because I think that last year foreshadowed this season. I think it looks Mm. about the same as we had last year where we're going to, I think at some point bench KJ Jefferson this year, and we're going to put in Curry Brown or any other quarterback that we have. And we might have a redshirt issue as far as that quarterback room is concerned. And I'm just very worried right now as far as if we can hold on to this season, we lost Mm. last year because of that situation because of the situation that we had the year prior with all of those quarterbacks we almost thought that there was a better there was better possibilities than there were with jr than there were outside of jrp or instead of jrp i think we we should be careful what we wish for but i think it's going to happen again and i think last year foreshadowed that now i will say Mm -hmm. though that the florida comment that i made did come did come true it was we had a very different feeling after that TCU game where we were on top of the world. We got yeah. a big 12 comeback win. And Florida hadn't really, you know, put out the fire just yet, but they were starting to kind of get it back on track a little bit. You could see this coming from a mile away. Every all the fans, everybody were expecting UCF to come in and destroy yeah. Florida. They suck, mm-hmm. right? They're terrible. Well, they play some they play some good teams still over there in the SEC and UCF just just they had a hundred different things wrong, and that defense, you know, played well, but still didn't play good enough. And the offense, yeah. obviously, is Couldn't really one sided, super over reliant. Yeah. Um, Matthew, did you have one final point before we get into the game picks? Oh, no, they just couldn't get anything going in that game. Um, some of the play calling just it just baffled me. Maybe, maybe that's yeah. my word baffled. And I'm concerned, too, that it, it, it would get to a point where they would even bench K.J. Jefferson. I know Gus Malzahn really likes them, and he thinks he's he's suited to be the starting quarterback of the team. So I don't even know if that would ever become a possibility, even yeah. if it were to come up that the team's still doing bad. Yeah, no, I got to go to the press conference, and he just said nothing but good things about – I just had to throw that in there. Uh, he just said nothing but good things about K.J. Um, someone asked, like, would you consider a quarterback change? And, you know, he – he wasn't having it. And, and you know what? I will say this. Like, if I was like, well, I am a betting man. Um, but <laughs> if I had to put a bet on it, uh, I would I would say at a certain point, KJ Jefferson would get benched. But yeah. I, I'm not saying that this is 
this is all of Coach Malzahn's fault. No. It doesn't look like he's the same player from Arkansas, and he started enough games in college to the point where no matter even if people are going to come at the play calling, should still be able to make it work, right? If we have the best running back room in the nation, uh, and I certainly honestly believe we're up there, maybe not top of the nation, but top five, like legitimately, shouldn't we be able to make this work? Uh, shouldn't this be an easier situation than he had at Arkansas where you're playing – Bama, a a lot of really great storied teams uh, in the SEC. Well, a and doesn't have too much of a of a story with the SEC, but they're still connected to them, and they still have a very good program there. Like, they're playing those teams, LSU, Ole Miss, all of these teams in his tenure there. You'd like to think that the Big 12 competition uh, wouldn't be exactly something that makes people question your ability to get the job done. This was one of the best transfer recruits that we've had uh, in our time here and certainly looking right now, like it is not p- panning out whatsoever, but we'll just have to wait and see big games coming up. Cincinnati could be a bounce back game for UCF, but I think we could get into now. Finally, the picks of the week. I don't have the chicken hat. I can run and go get it. Go get it. You've, oh. you've dodged it for two weeks. Well, me and justice will stall. Okay. Yeah. Okay, you guys yeah, are yeah, yeah, yeah. The game of the week is Ohio State Oregon. You guys can go on ahead. All right. Um, so for Ohio State Oregon, I am picking Ohio. I think that um I think that they match up really well. Um I know, you know, ESPN favors I think the spread's like three, right? Yeah, three. Yeah. Um I, you know, as much as I love Ryan Williams, I also really love Jeremiah Smith. Uh, do you see that? Do you see that catch he had? Was it was it this week or the week before? This yeah, week, gotta... every week, uh, every yeah. week ever. Uh, Jeremiah Smith is making plays. I think That's... he had something where he had like eight touches. There oh, it is. My goodness. There it is. Pick him better, is buddy. So, this is so bad. This is actually terrible. Can you guys hear me properly? Is that oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just making sure stream everything is good. Yeah, I'm wearing this chicken hat. This is terrible. I'm only wearing this for the game of the week pick. Okay. And Matthew, we're going. I actually see your game of the week pick. I got a little tip from uh, this chicken here. He told me, and mm. I think I might have to go the opposite way. Mm. Really? Yeah. This might be the first time we're actually heading keep that hat on, on, my friend. Mm. Ohio State, Oregon. Uh, I'm gonna say that I have trust in Oregon. Uh, I like the way that Dan Lanning coaches against some of the best coaches in college football. I like Dylan Gabriel. I do think he's a very good quarterback. I was lower on them earlier in the year, but mm-hmm. I think that they've kind of found their way. I think Ohio State's really good, but guess what? You have not played anybody whatsoever this year. So I'm going to take Oregon. I think this is going to be a shootout, though. I think this will be like 40, maybe like 45, 38 or something like that. All right. Well, before I was so rudely interrupted, uh, I was going to say I'm picking Ohio State. Uh 34 21. I said a lot of the reasons before, but I like Will Howard as a quarterback. Um, you know, and Oregon, you know, they were kind of faltering a little early in the season. I think some of those problems, you know, uh might come back in this game. Um this is gonna be a crazy game though. I'm I'm excited to watch it. Yeah, uh I'm gonna have to go Ohio State too. I think Ohio State's defense isn't talked about that. Really nothing about Ohio State is talked about enough by the national media or anyone in particular. Yeah. Jeremiah Smith is they're undisturbed. Player. They are exactly. undisturbed, Sleeping undisturbed by their competition and undisturbed by their media attention. Uh, I really like Jeremiah Smith. He is fantastic in every sense. Um, so he's probably going to score another touchdown this week. Um, you know, I got Alabama right. Uh, that was a little bit closer than I expected it to be by the end. Um, but I'm thinking Ohio State is going to pull away with this, and they're going to 30-13 to Ohio State. Whoa. Ooh, yeah. Whoa. I you know, remember Oregon. Oregon, Oregon beat Boise State. You know, that, that game Five was field goal. Yeah, I know. But Boise State's ranked 18 or 17. That's more of a good, that's more of a good thing for uh, Boise State than it is for Oregon to mention. Oh, I don't, I don't know. Man. Boise State could be the team that makes Boise the playoff. State, they yeah, they could make the playoff. Ohio State and Oregon are going to make the playoff. And Ohio State, if they played Boise State, would probably win by a lot more. I mean, look at what they just did to uh, uh, Iowa. Iowa is one of the best defenses mm-hmm. in the country. They just, they just, won by what 28 points so i like ohio state a lot it's nothing against oregon but oregon had its struggles early on against idaho uh so i think they're kind of working out of that but yeah, no one's no, to say that back. this won't come back to them 
Uh, but yeah, Ohio State, uh, what did I say, 34 13? So no, yeah, 30, 30 to 13. Thir- yeah. 30 to 13. All right. All right, well, let's go through Well, there's other ranked matchups this week. It's not week eight, but it is week seven, which is still pretty darn good. Mm. We could take a look at the top 25 here a little bit. I know we also got uh, Oklahoma and Texas. Matthew, you want to start that off? I'm taking off the chicken hat. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Oklahoma, Texas. I think Texas is going to blow them out. I really do. Uh, I Dang. think Arch Manning is playing pretty well. Is Texas is going to get blown out? out? No, Texas is going to blow them out. Oh. Oh. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So um, Arch Manning's still playing, right? Quinn Ewers hasn't come back yet. I haven't been I, following up on Texas, truthfully. I think it's um, Arch Manning. Okay, yeah, it's still Arch Manning. Well, Arch Manning's still playing amazing. Uh, and I, you know, Oklahoma's a good team, but Texas is number one for a reason. Um, yeah, so I'll take Texas. Um. Uh... Is this at Oklahoma? Oh, wait, right. question is it? Um, um, it is in the Cotton Bowl, Dallas, Texas. Oh, okay. Um, give me, give me Texas. Yeah, I'm not, I, I think I don't think it's going to be a blowout necessarily, but I do think Texas is going to ultimately win the game. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to say Texas, and I think they cover this too. I, I, I think Oklahoma's good, but they have just one more setback, okay? I think Texas a or excuse me, I think Texas is really good. So yeah. as much as I'm, you know, pumping up Oklahoma, they shouldn't drop out of the top 25 for this loss. They really shouldn't. No. I mean, they're playing Tennessee and Texas, like, so far this year. I, I don't – I can't pick Oklahoma here, but – and I can't even pick them to cover – but they're they're still a good team, so I'm I'm gonna say Texas. But you know, prayers I out. Think to Oklahoma will cover that. They'll deserve I think better. Fourteen and a half. Oklahoma shouldn't lose by that much. I think they'll cover. Do you think they'll cover? Yeah, I would. I, I wouldn't bet on it, but I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. The next game would be Ole Miss LSU. So battle of the one loss SEC teams looking mm. to kind of bounce back and get into that national conversation. Maybe one of them jumps Tennessee if they win this game too. Tennessee is sitting at eight in the uh, AP top twenty-five. I'm gonna say I would need somebody to come back That's, to me. Um, uh, Ole Miss is favored yeah. by three and a half. Mm. I think LSU is a good team though. No, they took care of UCLA pretty handily. I like that. South Carolina, they did just barely escape. Uh, they lost to USC, and USC is now like a little further down. Uh, give play? me Ole Miss. I'm gonna play it safe. Give me Ole Miss, but I think this game's close. Where are they? Where Where are they playing? Who's home? LSU's home, Baton Rouge. I That's might right. say LSU, and I, honestly, I don't think I could really tell you why. It's just a feeling. Okay. Uh, I'm, going with, I'm going with Ole Miss. I think this is going to kind of help him redirect his path on the Heisman campaign a little bit more. I think he's going to have okay. a great game. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to take Ole Miss. You're high on Jackson Dart. I like yeah, that. I mean, yeah. That's 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 very interesting. All right. Um, that does it for all of the ranked matchups. I don't know if you guys had any sort of specific game that you wanted to highlight. I did also want to mention that Penn State plays USC. That mm-hmm. is going to be my upset of the week. I think USC is a damn good football team. They are really good, and they are much better than any other team that Penn State has played all year. I've been saying this, but praying on their downfall. They uh, are going to lose to USC this week. USC probably should have had – that Michigan game, in my honest opinion. There was a lot of mistakes and a lot of things that went into them losing that game. I think they beat Penn State this week. That is the upset of the week, in my opinion. Also, Penn State, by the way, five-and-a-half point favorites. Not you. Not usually do you get that kind of line with a team ranked in the top four going against an unranked team. Also, Penn State's on the road, so I think that that might be also part of it. But give me USC here. Um, I think I don't know who to pick, honestly. I like Penn State a lot after talking about the Amelia rate. Uh, but I think their problems with the slow starts is going to get man- magnified against better teams, especially Ohio State when they play them. But with USC, this is going to kind of be that what we're going to see against Ohio State because, like you said, USC is very good. Um, 
So it depends on how how fast of a start they get. Because they, against UCLA, they had a spread of 28 points. They had a 28 point spread to beat UCLA. Penn State did. And I didn't think that was ever going to happen because of how slow they started off in the first and second quarter. I don't even think they were they were leading barely at halftime, like seven to three or something. So against a team like USC or Ohio State moving down the line, I think they need to get quicker in their explosiveness and scoring. So kind of dodging the question, but I'm, I'm going to say Penn State. I think Penn State, this will be the game they kind of figure it out. Yeah, I I don't know. Uh, USC has definitely had their problems. I don't think that this is the week that Penn State goes down. Um, I do think that they will go down. Uh, you know, they might be a little fraudulent. Uh, but, um, yeah, I don't see them leaving this game as losers. So I'm going to take Penn State too, sadly. God, I come off as such a hater on Penn State, man. No, I mean, I I'm think my, my word would have well, been my thing is My thing is that Penn State consistently goes 1-0 and over. That's all they focus on is like that's a kind of the mantra in their team is going one and zero every week, and this this is something that's that every team's past. Like Broncos do, yeah, that. but they do it well. I mean, you could look at every team and say, oh, well, they just need to go one and zero. Alabama couldn't mm-hmm. do it, Tennessee couldn't do it, Missouri couldn't do it. These are games that they were favored in. Well, I guess Missouri wasn't favored, but these are games that you got to win. Penn State does that week in and week out. So when they go up against USC, an unranked team, you know that's what they're going to do. They're going to win these must-win games, these easy-win games that you need. You know what? You actually make a lot of sense when you say that. And that's something that people do forget about college football is that it is very difficult to win every single week. But that's all the time that we have for nighttime this week. Thank you, Matthew Brecker, as always. Thank you for joining us, Justice Covert. I'm Patrick Preppy. Shout out Daniel Valdez for assistant producing this episode, as always. But that is it for nighttime. We will see you guys hopefully in the studio next Thursday.